In the world of high-performance automobiles, where the roar of race cars often compete with the hum of street-legal vehicles, the Panos Esperante GTR1 emerges as a synthesis of raw power, innovation and a dash of automotive eccentricity. Born from Panos' racing heritage, this American marvel defied norms, seamlessly blending the prowess of a race car with the aesthetics of a street-legal masterpiece. Let's delve deeper into the racing endeavors and the intricate details that made the Esperante GTR1 a timeless icon. Founded under the umbrella of Irish Chassis Design Co. in 1989, Panos grew into an automotive force under the guidance of Frank Costin. The pinnacle of Panos' achievements came in 1997 with the introduction of the Esperante GTR1. Far more than a road legal vehicle, it was a race car masquerading as a supercar. Underpinning the Esperante GTR1's sleek yet aggressive exterior was a powerhouse, an aluminium block V8 engine strategically positioned between the driver and the front axle. This configuration, designed for 24-hour Le Mans homologation, was a beast tailor-made for both track supremacy and on-road exhilaration. The Esperante GTR1 inherited its DNA from Panos' racing endeavors, particularly in the FIA GT Championship, Le Mans, and the IMSA GT series. The lightweight yet robust carbon fiber monocoque composite chassis became the crucible for this automotive masterpiece. Crafted for the rigors of competitive racing, the Esperante GTR1 transcended the boundaries of conventional design. Its influence was such that it secured a spot in every Gran Turismo game since Gran Turismo 3. Dubbed the Batmobile in homage to the iconic vehicle from the early 1990s Batman films, the Esperante GTR1 was a visual spectacle. Its short-nosed, long-decked structure held together by a full carbon monocoque chassis designed by Reinhard paid homage to classic sports cars while pushing the boundaries of modern design. This car was a pioneer in the FR race car wave. It sported a pushrod double wishbone front and back suspension, ensuring impeccable performance. But this is a street-legal race car. So enough on design, let's delve deeper into the heart of the beast. At the core of this American racing legend was an engine that echoed the might of its four bears. Jack Rouse Racing, the maestro behind the power plant, crafted an all-aluminum, fuel-injected dry sump special. The naturally aspirated 6-litre V8 engine roared to life, billowing out an impressive 600 horsepower and 500 foot-pounds of torque. Mated to a six-speed rear-mounted transaxle transmission, the Esperante GTR1 could achieve a blistering top speed of 226 miles per hour. As for acceleration, this thing catapulted itself from 0 to 60 in just 3.3 seconds. That's fast, especially for a 27-year-old car. Anyways, to meet the mitigation regulations, Panos created a road-legal Esperante GTR1. It boasted a full leather-lined cabin, proper lighting and meticulous detailing, making it a rare breed even among supercars. By the way, it seems like panels are still making these. I went to their website and you can order one, and they aren't even that expensive. I, I am joking though, um, a new one of these will set you back around $900,000, so it's, it's not a cheap car, but it is a really good, cool car with a lot of racing heritage. Anyway, speaking of racing, on to racing. While Panos might not have wielded the financial and engineering resources of industry giants such as McLaren, the Esperante GTR1 etched his name into racing history. Over its competitive run from 1997 to 2003, it clinched victories in various configurations, accumulating 20 podium finishes, 5 overall victories and 9 class victories in international racing events. Panos' success extended beyond the GTR1 with ventures into open-top Esperantes and even a hybrid variant in 1998, showcasing the brand's commitment to innovation. By the way, this hybrid version, made back in the late 90s, was way ahead of its time. The electric powertrain added an extra 150 horsepower to the 600 horsepower of the normal racer, which is pretty cool for a car that was made in the late 90s. Now, the GTR1 remains a beacon of American racing heritage, a symbol of unbridled power and unapologetic design. Now building on the racing prowess of the Esperante GTR1, Panos ventured into the GTLM class with the Esperante GTLM, debuting in 2005. This successor was a testament to the evolution of Panos' commitment to endurance racing. Sporting a V8 engine 
and a chassis designed for the rigors of competitive racing, it aimed to carry the torch of its predecessor. The Esperante GTLM found success in the American Le Mans series, with notable victories in the 12 Hours of Sebring and the Petit Le Mans. Its distinctive design, with a nod to the Esperante GTR1, showcased Panos' unwavering dedication to creating race cars that marry might and elegance. Anyways, let's end it off. In a world where automotive boundaries are constantly pushed, the Panos Esperante GTR1 stands tall as a reminder that sometimes a touch of eccentricity and a roaring V8 can create a legend that reverberates through the corridors of time. From its racing triumphs to its enduring legacy, the Esperante GTR1 remains an emblem of American racing heritage, encapsulating the essence of unbridled power and unapologetic design. As the automotive landscape evolves, the Esperante GTR1's legacy lives on, a timeless icon etched into the racing archives of ingenuity and audacity. But at the end of the video, please let me know what you thought of the video number one and what you think of the Panos GTR1. But let me know what you guys thought. If you guys enjoyed this video, please have a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you did like it, you'll most probably like most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, I.